Hey guys, Rachel here with Historic America and I would like to share a statue with you today. Uh, before we head over though and see the statue, I'd like to give you a little bit of information about the day that it was unveiled. Uh, so the day was April 14th, 1876. April 14th, that's 11 years to the day after President Lincoln was assassinated at Ford's Theater. And on that morning, a crowd started to gather at about 7th and K Street Northwest, uh, and they were preparing to be part of a really big parade. The parade route went all the way from there at 7th and K, down past the White House, all the way through the city to where I'm standing now in Northeast DC. Um, and like I said, it was a really, really big day. So big that uh, DC declared the day a public holiday and anyone who was anyone was at this ceremony. And the ceremonial unveiling was of a monument built to Lincoln in celebration of emancipation. So let's head over and check it out. As we're heading over, let's talk about who attended this grand unveiling. President Ulysses S. Grant was present, along with important government officials and other dignitaries. The Marine Corps band played and the keynote speaker was one of the greatest orators of all time, Frederick Douglass. This statue is especially unique because it was funded exclusively by formerly enslaved individuals. The first $5 was donated by a woman named Charlotte Scott. A St. Louis banker by the name of James E. Yeatman organized the collection of funds and commissioned an Italian sculptor to create the memorial. He was also there on April 14th and said that this was a tribute to American patriotism through the gratitude of the freed people. This was the Freedmen's Memorial. Not what you expected? This was paid for by formerly enslaved people? It's hard to look at with 21st century eyes. It's difficult to understand. Clothed Lincoln towers over a kneeled and naked black man. Let's unpack what we're dealing with. If we put this piece in context, we can take apart what we're looking at. This is an artistic interpretation of a manumission ceremony. The institution of slavery historically was not permanent, generational, or based on race. That's our Americanized version. When we look at slavery in, say, Greece or Rome, it was often a more temporary state. And when you climbed the social ladder to freedom, there was a manumission ceremony where your master released you. But enslaved people didn't have manumission ceremonies in the United States. When Yeatman spoke to the crowd that day, he mentioned that the sculptor, Thomas Ball, sent four pictures of the original model while he was working on it. Lincoln, standing as he presents now, but the enslaved individual was in a fully bowed kneel at his feet. Yeatman sent back a photograph of the last black American captured under the Fugitive Slave Act, Archer Alexander, to serve as the model for a man embodying the moment of emancipation. The figure's fist reaching up, symbolically shifting the depiction from freedom given to freedom seized. Again, with 21st century eyes, this distinction is hard to focus on and hardly justifies the subservient position, the lack of clothing, and Lincoln looking like a white savior. Remember I said this was funded by recently freed African Americans, but this is who handled the money and brokered the deal with this guy. We have very limited evidence of the opinions of the folks who actually coughed up the cash to build a memorial to the martyred president. So when Douglas took to the podium that afternoon, he found himself in a position he'd become accustomed to, speaking for his whole race. There is some conversation as to whether or not Douglas actually liked the statue. Whether he liked it or not, I can't say. But I don't think he would have spoken at its unveiling if he felt it was anything short of progress. And progress was one of the themes in his speech given that day. But before he got to the progress, he stated plainly the problems. With unapologetic directness, he identified Lincoln as firstly the white man's president. And he noted that the Lincoln of 61 was a very different president than the one in 63. It took years of bloody war to get to that document that he's holding in the statue. I think this is also an important place to talk about the emotional trauma of enslavement. The people that paid for this statue 
we're only a few years removed from being enslaved. We are still dealing with the trauma and the legacy of slavery today. So how do we progress now? History can't be erased. It must be taught and grappled with in order to continue to move forward. Where is this statue's place in our world today? Should it be removed, burned, moved to a museum? Should it remain so that we can have this conversation? Is it staying offensive in and of itself? As history decides the fate of this statue, we wanted to make sure that this unique story wasn't lost. Just a few days ago on Juneteenth, a Confederate statue was torn down and burned up by protesters. DC's congressional delegate, Eleanor Holmes Norton, uh, who's been pushing for the removal of that statue legislatively for years now, said in response that although she agreed Pike had to go, that wasn't how it should have happened. She said that this is the United States. We don't destroy our past. We learn from it. We couldn't agree more. 